Someone said I hadn't played a good hoedown all night. And the second was with old Sally Gooden. Oh, we're going to play Arkansas Traveler here. You, you ever hear the old dialogue that used to be done with the Arkansas Traveler? It's a famous old vaudeville uh, thing. The, uh, the old farmer, you see, the settler, the Ozark... Man is sitting on his cabin door and the rain is dripping down. He's fiddling away. Down the road, clippity clop, comes a city slicker on a horse. And uh, he reins up in the front of the little cabin. He says, uh, I say, farmer, where does this road go to? It ain't moved since I've been here. What I mean is I want to know how to get to Little Rock. I don't know about no Little Rock, but there's a great big one down in the spring. Uh, I say, farmer, I notice your corn is mighty yeller and bad. Yep, I planted the yeller kind. Uh, well, farmer, how did your taters turn out this year? It didn't turn out at all. Me and Sal had to dig them out. Uh, I say, Farmer, your roof is kind of leaking. Why don't you fix it? You darn fool, it's raining. Well, what I mean is, why don't you fix it sometime when it's not raining? You're a bigger fool than I thought. It wouldn't be leaking then. <laughs> Farmer, there's not much difference between a you, you and a fool, is there? Nope, just distance my yard and between me and you. <laughs> Farmer, you just don't know much, do you? Nope, but I ain't lost. <laughs> Finally, the stranger says, uh, Farmer, why on earth don't you play the second half of that tune? Which point the farmer says, I would if I could, stranger, but you know, I don't know it. I heard it only once, and I can only remember the first half. And the stranger says, well, hand me that fiddle. I can play the second half. You can! Right away, the farmer becomes all hospitality. Sally says, set the best in the house. Come right in, stranger. Take a chair. So you can stay all night if you can fiddle the rest of that tune. Funny thing, most of us are not more than a couple generations away from farm life, and yet uh, how little most of us know about it. The average person, if you speak of farming, uh, first place they are just to have think, oh, wouldn't it be nice to live in the country? 
And it's true, this kind of wishful thinking is, is uh, even among many farmers. There used to be a poem, I remember, that was on a plate. Uh, one of my grandmothers had a plate, and it was, the poem was entitled, God Speed the Plow, and it said, The wealthy and great live in comfort and state. I envy them not, I declare it. I eat my own lamb, my own chicken and ham. I shear my own fleece and I wear it. I arise in the dawn, something under the horn. The, the lark is my morning alarmer. So jolly boys now, here's God speed the plow. Long life and success to the farmer. Hmm. Or uh, that's, that's really, here's another example of this wishful thinking. It's a really gentle little little song. A friend of mine in Houston, Texas sings it. I once didn't know a farmer, a jolly good old soul. I used to do some work for him around his country home. He had a lovely daughter, to woo her I did try. And when I asked the old man for her, this was his reply. Oh, treat my daughter kindly, say you'll do no harm. And when I die, I'll will to you my little house and farm. My horse, my plow, my sheep, my cow, my hogs and little barn. And all the baby chickens in the garden. Kind of a lullaby, isn't it? You could sing that chorus with me, it's real pretty. Treat my daughter kindly, say you do no harm. And when I die, I'll will to you my little house and farm. My horse, my plow, my sheep, my cow, my hogs and little barn. And all the baby chickens in the garden. Now the old man has consented, and married we will be. We'll own this little place ourselves and live contentedly. I'll always do, and when I die, I will do you my little house and farm. My horse, my plow, my sheep, my cow, my hogs and little barn. And all the baby chickens in the garden. The dreams that people have. I think the reality of the situation is a little bit more in this next song. Uh, this was a, a famous tune back in the 1920s. I saw a farmer and his mule plowing over on the mountainside. As he went along, he was grumbling as he plowed those furrows deep and wide. Yes, as he went along a plowing, he was swearing and snorting all the way. I overheard his conversation with his mule, and this is what I heard him say. Oh, mule, you're the son of a jackass, and I am the image of God. Yet here we work hitched together, toiling and tilling the sod. I wonder if you work for me, or if I work for you, old mule. Sometimes I think it's a partnership between a mule and a doggone fool. When plowing, we go the same distance, but I work harder than you. You skim the ground on four good legs while I hobble along on two. So, mule, mathematically speaking, why, I do more than you. Yes, I do just twice the work per leg, just twice as much as you. Now, soon we'll be making the corn crop. That crop will be split three ways. A third for you, and a third for me, and a third for the landlord's pay. You get your third and you eat it. You're getting the best, and how? I split my third amongst eight kids, a banker, six hens, and a cow. So, mule, confidentially speaking, would you change places with me? Would you take up all of my worries and still contented be? Would you swap places, I'm asking? Of course, you know we couldn't. But would you, if you could, now tell the truth? You know darn well you wouldn't. I had a request to sing, or rather play a few banjo pieces from a piece of chamber music called the Goofing Off Suite. 
uh, for those who haven't heard this before, I'll just explain that it, I uh, composed this, that is, swiped it, uh, after visiting the Berkshire Music Festival. Uh, they had some chamber music up there, and it's wonderful stuff, some of it. And I figured that it was a shame banjo pickers didn't have any chamber music. Well, of course, if you want to learn how to play a guitar or any of the other instruments, you've got to learn how to goof off. If you're conscientiously doing your homework or washing the dishes or something, you'll never get around to playing the guitar. It'll stay in its case year in, year out. However, if you know how to goof off, then you'll get somewhere. Uh, I think that's why teenagers uh, learn instruments quicker than others. Um, in my own home, I know I'm in a favored position. Everybody in my house can be working to beat the band. I'm lying up in the bed, picking the banjo, and my children say, Father's practicing. <laughs> so, uh, Here's three movements of the goofing off suite. In between each movement, there should be absolute silence because good music is holy. <laughs> First, the gavotte. If you like it, I'll play another one.
meiner Freude. Er ist meines Herzens Trost und Sarg. I was wretchedly in tune there. Almost my favorite thing in that goofing off suite, though, was uh, almost a travesty on the original, except that I liked the tune so much I, was, I felt it was a shame that people never played it just because it was written for a symphony orchestra. You know, it really is hard to spoil a good tune. Uh, and uh, I go around proselytizing for, for mixing up different kinds of music. Get over the idea that you got to stick popular music off one corner and folk music off in another corner and fine arts music somewhere up there and never the twain should meet. All throughout history, the different idioms have been swiping from each other and it's uh, might as well continue the process. Uh, they've been swiping folk tunes for years. I thought we ought to return the compliment. And as a matter of fact, the day then, uh, that a young composer comes along and gets just saturated in the blues and hoedowns and spirituals and rock and roll too, then we'll get some really good symphonies and operas written around here. And there are lots of good songs that no one's ever heard yet. Here's a spiritual that I almost forgot. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Adam in the garden pinning leaves. You could sing it even if you never heard it before. Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Adam in the garden, pinning leaves. The first time God called, Adam didn't answer. Adam in the garden, pinning. Yes, the first time God called, Adam didn't answer. Adam in the garden, pinning leaves. Oh, Eve, where is Oh, Eve Oh, Eve, where is Adam? Adam in the garden, pinning leaves Now the second time God called, he hollered a little louder Adam in the garden, pinning Yes, the second time God called, he hollered a little louder Adam in the garden, pinning leaves Oh, Eve Oh, Eve, oh, Eve, where is Adam? Adam in the garden, pinning leaves. Adam in the garden, pinning leaves. I do love these songs. They, they seem to make so much sense. And you can read a whole lot of different ideas into them. An interesting thing someone pointed out to me a little while back 
Do you ever wonder why so many spirituals always talk about moving? I'm going to cross over Jordan. Walk together, children. I'm going to move over. I don't think this is any accident. These are songs that were made up by people in slavery, and they were interested in moving. Let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride on the wings of the morning, let me take a ride where a new day is dawning, let me put on my gospel shoes, go around the world, tell the good news, let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. You know, this is all I know to the song. If anybody knows the verses, I hope you come and let me know. I'm going to teach you this chorus anyway, because it's so much fun. Let me take a ride, let me take a ride. Let me take a ride on the wings of the morning. Let me take a ride where the new day is dawning. Let me put on my gospel shoes, go around the world, tell the good news. Let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. Wanna try it? Oh, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. Let me take a ride on the wings of the morning. Let me take a ride where a new day is dawning. Let me put on my gospel shoes, go around the world. Tell the good news, let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. You can clap your hands on this if you want, but you know you ought to get the offbeat. Don't clap. That's on the downbeat, no good. Let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride on the wings of the morning, let me take a ride when the new day is dawning. Let me put on my gospel shoes, go around the world, tell the good news. Let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. What's more now? Let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. So in the morning, let me take a ride where a new day is on. Let me put on my gospel shoes, go around the world, tell the good news. Let me take a ride, let me take a ride, let me take a ride. Hey, sounds nice. Earlier this evening, when I was talking about Big Bill Brunsey, I didn't know that Bill was sitting up somewhere in the balcony there. I'd like to say, hi, wherever you are, Bill. <laughs> Later on this fall, a lot of Bill's friends, uh, we're going to throw a shindig for him. I don't know exactly the date yet, but you'll probably hear about it, and I, all kinds of good singers are going to be there. Some of Bill's friends from all around, good blues guitar pickers like Muddy Waters, and gospel singers like Mahalia Jackson, I do believe. And we'll see you there. Uh, the nice thing about any kind of folk music program is that it really get, they get the best singing audiences in the whole world. There's a man came to review a concert I was giving in Toronto last week, and he was so perplexed. He says, I was said I was supposed to come and listen to Mr. Seeger sing, and all I heard was the audience singing. <laughs> he didn't miss much. I would like to really hear you sing out on this one, though. It's a song I'd almost forgotten. I'd stopped singing. It was one I'd known way back around World War II. And then... I heard somebody, somebody asked me for it that way. And my golly, the words still rang true. United Nations make a change. Every link is freedom's name. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. You know, you can get a kind of repeat on that last chorus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Now, this is the kind of song if you can't sing on, you can pat your feet. But you have to be in there somehow. It was taken, you know, from a real old one. Noah, Noah, let me come in. Doors all locked and the wind open. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Let's hear it again. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand. 
hand on the plow. Many men have fought and died So we could be here side by side Keep your hand on the plow Hold on, hold on, hold on Keep your hand on the plow Hold on, sing it again now Hold on, hold on, hold on Keep your hand on the plow Hold on Right across the street from here, a bunch of nuclear scientists are all meeting. They ought to hear this verse. It could have been written this week. God gave Noah the rainbow sign. No more water but fire next time. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. I really do mean it. I wish we could sing this so they'd hear it down on the loop. I wish we could sing it so they hear it in Washington, D.C., around the world. United Nations make a chain. Every link is freedom's name. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Freedom's name is mighty sweet. Black and white are gonna meet. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold Oh, one more time. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. beat. They're such real pretty tunes. As I went walking one Sunday morning to breathe the sweet and pleasant air, who should I spy but a fair young maiden? She seemed to me like a lily fair. I stepped up to her so quickly saying 
Would you like to be a sailor's wife? Oh, no kind sir, I'd rather tarry And to live single all my life What makes you differ from another's wishes? I'm sure you're useful and handsome too Come set sail with me to Pennsylvania Adieu old England forevermore The truth kind sir I'll quickly tell you I could have been married seven long years ago To one John Riley who left this country He is the cause of all my woe So I'll not go with you to Pennsylvania Neither go with you to that distant shore For my heart is with Riley, I can't forget him Oh, I may never see him no more Now when he saw that she loved him truly He gave her kisses, one, two, and three Saying, I am Riley, your long-lost lover Who's been the cause of your misery quite make up my mind what the plot was how the plot actually ended whether he was just pretending he was John Riley and it was just a little white lie between them uh, it seems incredible how could she fail to recognize someone beard and all there's, there's a lot of songs like that you can't quite figure out and matter of fact that's maybe the fun of it first it means one thing it means, it means another it depends who you're singing it to There's a nice ballad melody that was, uh, I don't know the original words to it. Back in the 1930s, there was a little girl, Della May Graham was her name, in the town of Davidson Wilder, Tennessee. It's a textile town. And her father uh, was one of the union organizers and was shot and killed in Wilder. And she wrote a song. On April the 30th, 1933 Upon the streets of Wilder They shot him brave and free They shot my darling father He fell upon the ground Was in the back they shot him His blood came streaming down they shot my darling father They beat him on the head The hired gunman beat him And left him there for dead Although he left the Union He tried so hard to build His spirit works for justice And justice guides us still I suppose these melodies have been used for many sets of verses. Not just two or three, but maybe two or three hundred, or maybe two or three thousand. 
It's that way with, with our, some of these real beautiful melodies, like the one which most of us know, The Streets of Laredo. That's known in a lot of different ways. There was an Irish mason who lived near my home, used to sing it. About, he called it The Bard of Armagh, about a, some singer. At a fair or a wake, I could swing my shillelagh or slip into a jig with me brogues bound with straw. Not a fair Colleen in the village or valley, but no bold William Brady, the bard of our mach. About 15 verses to it. The same girl who sang that ballad of Barney Graham knew another song. It was a real depression song. Very strange things happening in this land. Very strange things happening in this land. Oh, the rich man boasts and brags, but the poor man goes in rags. There is strange things happening in this land. There is strange things happening in this land. There is strange things happening in this land. Too much groceries on the shelf, so we have none for ourselves. There are strange things happening in this land. There are strange things happening in this land. There are strange things happening in this land. Too much cotton in our sacks, so we have none on our backs. There are strange things happening in this land. Funny, all these songs, you know, they're sitting down there in the Library of Congress. Just one just across the street from the Congress. So near and yet so far. Actually, uh, one of those songs that's sitting in there in the Library of Congress caused the appropriation of a couple million dollars to be stopped for the resettlement administration back in the uh, New Deal days. It seems that one of the branches of the resettlement administration had printed up some little folk song books and one of these songs in it was a song uh, which they'd learned from old Emma Dusenberry, the blind lady about 80 years old of Arkansas, who knew so many hundreds of ballads. She was the one who, when she was a teenager, said she was going to learn all the songs in the world until she quit when they found, she found they were making them up quicker than she could learn them. And uh, anyway, this was just one of the songs she'd sung, and the Resettlement Administration printed it up. Henry Wallace told me once that he went down to Capitol Hill to try and save the Resettlement Administration from the Congress acts. He walked into the office of a very influential senator, in fact, a key man in the, in the whole fight, and the senator said, Mr. Wallace, look what your Resettlement Administration is printing. And there it was. So the candidate's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. The candidate's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. He'll meet you, treat you, ask you for your vote. Look out, boys, he's a dodging for a moat. Oh, we're all a dodging, 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 dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging out the way through the world. Preacher, he's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. The preacher, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. Preach you the gospel, tell you of your crimes, but look out, boys, he's a dodging for your dimes. We're all a dodging, 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 dodging. No, we're all a dodging out the way through the world. Oh, the lover, he's a dodger, a well-known dodger. The lover, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. He'll hug you, kiss you, call you his bride. Look out, girls, he's a telling you a lie. Oh, we're all a dodging, 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 dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging out the way through the world. Oh, the merchant, he's a dodger, a well-known dodger. The merchant, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. Sell you goods at double the price. When you come to pay him, you got to pay him twice. So we're all a dodging, a dodging, dodging, dodging. Oh, we're all a dodging out the way through. This gets more subversive as we go on. (laughs) 
Oh, the sheriff, he's a dodger, a well-known dodger. The sheriff, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. He'll meet you in the street like a mighty fine man. Look out, boys, he'll throw you in the can. Oh, we're all a dodging, a dodging, dodging, dodging. All a dodging all the way through the world. General, he's a dodger, yes, a well-known dodger. The general, he's a dodger, yes, and I'm a dodger too. March you up and he march you down. Look out, boys, he'll put you underground. Oh, we're all a dodging, a dodging, dodging, dodging. We're all a dodging out the way through the world. P.S. They didn't get the appropriation. Well, uh. uh Uh, say, there's a wonderful song. You were singing so good a little, little while ago. Let's see if you can sing good again. A wonderful song that Bob Gibson has taught us all. Maybe some of you know it already. Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? All on that day. Now, even if you don't get all the verses, you can get that chorus every time. Run to the moon, moon is a bleeding, run to the moon, moon is a bleeding, run to the moon, moon is a bleeding, all on that day. Oh, sinner man, oh, sinner man, we're gonna run to, oh, sinner man, we're gonna run to, oh, sinner man, we're gonna run to, all on that day. Run to the rock. Rock was a melting, run to the rock. Rock was a melting, run to the rock. Rock was a melting all on that day. Oh, sinner man, oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? All on that day. Run to the sea, sea is a boiling, run to the sea. Sea is a boiling, run to the sea. Sea is a boiling, all on that day. Oh, sinner man, oh, sinner man, we're gonna run to, oh, sinner man, we're gonna run to, oh, sinner man, we're gonna run to, all on that day. Oh, sinner man, you ought to have been a praying, oh, sinner man, you ought to have been a praying. Oh, sinner man, he ought to have been a praying all on that day. Oh, sinner man, oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? Oh, sinner man, where you gonna run to? All on that day. Hey, sound good. There's a silly little story I've been telling kids when I uh, put on programs for them. Somebody asked if I'd repeat it here. You don't have to listen if you don't want to, but if any of you have children, you might uh, use this general principle uh, as one that you can tell stories to them by. There's all kinds of songs in the world that on the surface of it don't make any sense. And of course, some kid comes up and says, Papa, what does it mean? Long may children ask, what does it mean? Anyway, you, have, you don't know, so you, the simplest thing is to make up a story. Uh, in a book of African folk tunes, I came across a little lullaby. only had one word in it. At the bottom, it had a footnote saying, this story is about a monster. Ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo. Once upon a time, there was a little boy, and he liked to play the ukulele. He'd go around town, clink, 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 making a racket. But of course, the grown-ups were busy. They'd say, get out of here. Take that ukulele. Go, the moose. Kick him out of the house. Not only that, the boy's father was a magician. He had a little magic wand. He could go zoop, zoop, and make things disappear. But the father was a terrible, practical joker. He'd come up to someone drinking a nice glass of something, and he'd go zoop, and the glass would disappear. 
Go to someone maybe doing a hard job of work, maybe sawing a log of wood or something, go zoop, zoop, and the saw would disappear. Go to someone just about to sit down after a hard day's work, zoop, the chair would disappear. Well, people said to the father, you get out of here too, you and your practical jokes. Take that magic wand and go. And the boy and his father, they ostracized him. That means they made him live in the edge of town. Now in this town, they used to tell stories. The old people used to tell stories about the monsters and giants that lived in the old days. They used to tell a story about a monster called Abi yo yo He was as tall as a house and could eat people up. Of course, nobody believed it, but they told the story just the same. One day, one day, one day, the sun rose blood red over the hill. And the first people that looked out of their windows, they saw a great big shadow in front of the sun. And they could feel the whole ground shake. As down through the fields it came. Women screamed, strong men fainted. They say, run for your lives, it's our Bioyo. He comes to the sheep pasture, grabs a whole sheep, oh, eats it down one bite. Comes to the cow pasture, grabs a whole cow, oh, eats it down one bite. They say, run, grab your most precious possessions, run, run. Just then the boy and his father woke up. I think they'd been up late the night before at a party or something. The boy looked out the window and said, hey, Paul, what is this? Look. And his father comes and said, oh, son, he says, it's Abiyoyo. Oh, if I could only get him to lie down, I could make him disappear. The boy says, come with me, father. And he grabs his father, and the father grabs a magic wand. The boy gets his ukulele, and they run across the fields right up to Abiyoyo. There was Abiyoyo looking down at these two little figures. He had long fingernails because he never cut them. He had slobbery old teeth because he never brushed them. He had matted old hair because he never combed it. He had stinking old feet because he never washed them. And he was just about to come down on the two boy. When the boy whips out his ukulele and he starts to sing. Ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo. Well, you know, the monster had never heard a song about himself before. And a foolish grin spread over his face and he started to dance. Ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo, ah, be yo yo. Monster got out of breath. He fell down on the ground. Zoop, zoop goes the father, and Abiyoyo disappears. People streamed out of their houses. They ran across the fields, lifted the boy and his father up in their shoulders, and said, Hooray! He's gone. Come on back to town. Bring your damn ukulele. We don't care anymore. And they all sang, Abiyoyo, Abiyoyo. Gee, you seem to like it better than the kids do. Before this evening is over, I promised someone I'd sing one of the prettiest songs I know. If I had wings like Noah's dove, I'd fly up the river to the one I love. Fare thee well. This song is Dink's song because the woman who sang it, her name was Dink. Old man John Lomax had a little Edison recording machine way back around the time of the First World War. He went out to a tent village of some workers on the Mississippi levees. He wandered down the dusty little street between the tents. And I asked if there were any good singers in town. <laughs> they must have thought he was crazy. But somebody said, oh, you should see Dink. She's a good singer. And he went and he found her there. She was washing clothes. She was feeling very disgusted with the world. He said, sat down on the bed and sang him this song. 
became a favorite of all the Lomax family. A year or two later, he had occasion to come back to the town where she said was her home. He said, where's Dink? And they pointed up to the graveyard at the end of town. He said, that's where Dink's living now. If I had wings like Nora's dove, I'd fly up the river to the one I love. Fare thee well, oh honey, fare thee well. That man I love, he's long and tall. He moves his body like a cannonball. Fare thee well, oh honey. Fare thee well. One of these days, and it won't be long, you call my name. Oh dear, oh dear. Two nights in a row, someone had to ask for a song. They got persistence, all right. A song I learned at a certain unnamed college in the Midwest. From uh, the YMCA leader. See, I'd been telling him, he says, you gotta make up songs, don't just sing the old ones. And he said, well, here's one we made up. He said, a few years ago, the student Christian movement had a convention in Philadelphia. And we invited many people to speak for us, including a socialist. Uh, and the Philadelphia Evening Bulletin landed on us like a ton of bricks. So we took the words out of the editorial and made up a song for them. Oh, the student Y has found a new vocation is poisoning the students' minds. The leaders, by astute manipulation, are poisoning the students' minds. Big men, bold men, filled with sneering pride, behind a smiling countenance they hide. Spiritual arsenic, moral cyanide, they're poisoning the students, poisoning the students, poisoning the students' minds. Sing it again! Poisoning the students, poisoning the students, poisoning the students' minds. There's just one thing that they forgot to mention, the student has got a mind. So it's safe to hold this great convention, the student hasn't got a mind. But if our leaders should hear this dreadful news, we are sure their senses they would lose. So we'll just let them go on thinking if they choose that they're poisoning the students, poisoning the students, poisoning the students' minds. They're poisoning the students, poisoning the students, poisoning the students' minds. At this particular college, the young people in the Y felt that their last faculty advisor had been eased out of his job unjustly. So he made up a verse. Oh, Uncle Will has sent away our brother for poisoning the students' minds. But he'll find out there'll always be another poisoning the students' minds. He'd rather have us stick to evening prayers and stop meddling in national affairs because that doesn't suit the millionaires. We're poisoning the students, poisoning the students, poisoning the students' minds. We're poisoning the students, poisoning the students, poisoning the students' minds. Same person wanted a, a song which well, I don't want to get anybody in Dutch here. Well, we'll sing it just the same. <laughs> a professor of Chaucerian English wrote this song. He was also a hot jazz fan. As a matter of fact, he stopped teaching Chaucer and is concentrating on jazz. He's uh, one of the most uh, well known people in the whole jazz field these days. But back when he was teaching Chaucer, he was teaching at Cornell, 
and was a member of the teachers' union, and they had a party once. He and some friends had a quartet. They call themselves the Slipshod Four. And one of the other English teachers uh, sang this blues, which they sang. Oh, teacher, teacher, why are you so poor? Oh, teacher, teacher, why are you so poor? When it comes to unions, you're an amateur. Now unions are for workers, but a teacher has prestige. Oh, unions are for workers, but a teacher has prestige. He can feed his kids on that old noblesse oblige. Prestige is fine, but so is bread and meat. Oh, prestige is fine, but so is bread and meat. What good is that white collar when you cannot eat? Yes, he wears a white collar treated with respect. Wears a white collar treated with respect. Financially, he's solid wrecked. Now, come on now, teacher. Be a happy drudge. Come on, teacher, be a happy drudge. You can stuff yourself on that old intellectual sludge. I got the teacher's blues, those blues are on my mind. I got the teacher's blues, those blues are on my mind. Cause inflation's got me, done left me far behind. Hey, let's end off singing the song that some young fellow over there asked for. An old spiritual, it's got a refrain that goes, Fare thee well, fare thee well. No matter what I sing, you have to come into that line. Actually, come to think of it, there's two ways to sing it. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Tell you what, we really ought to sing this, though. We ought to shake the building until the stones come a little bit loose and the mortar starts dribbling down. Can you sing, fare thee well, fare thee well? Take a deep breath and just sing those two words. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Oh, that was too pretty. Sing it a little bit. More oomph in it. Try it again. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Now we need some high tenors to sing. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Who can get up there? Fare thee well, fare thee well. And we also need some low voices. Fare thee well, fare thee well. Well, you make up your mind whether you're a bass or a contra mezzo soprano or whatever it is. Split tenors, anybody else, you can sing high or low as you feel like it. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare. In that great getting up morning, God's gonna set this world on fire. God's gonna set this world on fire. In that great getting up morning. That great getting up morning. God's gonna up and speak to Gabriel. God's gonna up and speak to Gabriel. Gabriel, look behind the altar. Fare thee well. Gabriel, look behind the altar. Fare thee well. In that great getting up morning. Get in the morning. Gabriel, pick up that silver trumpet. Fare thee well. Fare. Gabriel, pick up that silver trumpet. Fare thee well. Gabriel, blow that silver trumpet. Fare thee well. Fare. Gabriel, blow that silver trumpet. Fare thee well. In that day, get in the morning. 
in that gig in the morning. Lord, how loud shall I blow it? Really well. Lord, how loud shall I blow it? Now blow one blast, calm and easy. Very really well. Then wake my children that are sleeping. Very really well. In that great get in the morning, fairly really well, fairly really well. In that great get in the morning, fairly really well. Now open up those prison dungeons, fairly really well. Yes, open up those prison dungeons. Yes, open up those tombs of silence, fare they well, fare they. Yes, open up those tombs of silence, fare they well, 